her life in the rowboat. Super excited to share the next piece of the puzzle with you today around understanding our future as a picture of us sitting in a rowboat. So far we've looked at the rowboat and how it helps us understand the Hebrew meaning of the word future. And then we've made the connection between the uh, rowboat, the ark, and the ark as a picture of God's grace, and then as a picture of God's work on the cross. And then we saw there was a connection between the Garden of Eden as a picture of grace, as a fence that protects life and our life in the rowboat. To set foot into the rowboat is to step into God's Eden, into the place of his pleasure. Well, let's explore together the, the next uh, picture, if you like, that comes from the rowboat. So you may have seen uh, rowing events at the Olympics and in particular I love the rowing eight. And it's fascinating to me in the light of all that God's been teaching me about life in the rowboat. First of all, there's, there's eight rowers in the boat and in Hebrew the number eight stands for new beginnings. So when we get into the rowboat, we're not alone. Uh, it is all about the whole crew working together. But in that, that rowing aid event, you notice that there's actually a ninth person in the, in the boat. And this person's very unusual in that they're facing in the opposite direction to the rest of the crew. And that ninth person is called the coxswain. Now the coxswain is a vital component to the operation of the team, to the rowing eight. And the coxswain is the one who's actually looking towards where their future lies as they row the boat. And it's the coxswain's duty to keep an eye out for all the things that are occurring in the immediate environment of the rowboat. And the coxswain is also responsible for the direction of the boat and the speed at which the boat is moving. So it was truly fascinating to me when I just went to the dictionary uh, and looked up the word coxswain. And as I read down, I came to this stunning definition, and that was boat servant. And suddenly my eyes were opened, and I realised that in the revelation of the rowboat, that Yeshua is our coxswain. And that led me to... Um, Hebrews 12 verse 2 where we read looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God and that's literally what's happening when we're sitting in the rowboat we're looking towards the coxswain. We're looking towards Yeshua, who is the author and finisher of our faith. Another scripture that really became so relevant when I began to understand these things was Revelation 22 verse 13, where Jesus said of himself, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. If you meditate on that verse for a little while, it'll eventually come to your realisation that if indeed Yeshua is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, 
then he is the future. So even though we started out this journey thinking that we were facing backwards or facing away from the future, when we see that Yeshua is our coxswain, we then begin to understand that when we're looking at him, we are looking at the future. Now, as the Lord's unfolded uh, these things to me, I'm always on the lookout for uh, evidence from Scripture that reinforces this, these pictures around the rowboat. And I found one just the other day with regard to Yeshua as our coxswain. And it's found in Mark 6, verse 48. And let me just read that for you. Then he saw them straining at rowing, for the wind was against them. Now about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, that is Jesus, walking on the sea and would have passed them by. And when they saw him walking on the sea, they supposed it was a ghost and cried out, for they all saw him and were troubled. But immediately he talked with them and said to them, Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. Then he went up into the boat to them, and the wind ceased. And they were greatly amazed in themselves beyond measure and marvelled. It's a great picture, isn't it? Here are the disciples in a fishing boat, a rowboat, and they're struggling in their rowing because of the environment around them. And at that point, they do not have their coxswain on board. Yeshua is not with them in the boat. But the moment that Yeshua joins them in the boat, the, the moment that their focus turns from worrying about the environment around them and their immediate struggles, uh, the experience is peace, be still. Their experience is that the storm was quieted. And this is the power of, of this picture as we think about our future as not looking over our shoulder at the things that we imagine, but keeping our focus on Yeshua, who is our coxswain. It's been great to share with you again. Uh, please visit my website, www.richardeagle.com. Uh, I'd love to visit you uh, and your uh, small group or connect group or Bible study group uh, and share some of these insights with you. So if you'd like to pursue that, just jump on my connect page in the website and shoot me a message. Look forward to meeting up with you again real soon and sharing some more insights on life in the road.